Welcome to our chapter one lecture of history of fashion, how it all began, ancient Egyptian times and Crete. One of the things we need to talk about is why people pick what they pick out to wear and why. So I want you to think about that as we discuss throughout uh, the different eras. Now clothing has existed since prehistoric times and the question is well why do people wear clothes? And the main reasons have been protection protection from the elements, from the environment, uh, from the weather, uh, from people, so if they're going into battle. Uh, so for protection, it's a, it's a big one. Uh, also for status, so to show that you're part of a group, affiliation, certain ranking within the group, you have a showcase of wealth, so showing status in terms of socioeconomic status. For modesty, uh, to cover the body, for protection in that regard, to be modest, to show, uh, to cover the body and not show it off. So for modesty and for pure aesthetic, so for pure decoration. Now, clothing is, as an art form, growing out of the zeitgeist. So you need to know this term. This is your first vocabulary term, zeitgeist. And it's German and it describes basically a combination of social, psychological, and aesthetics factors. So the idea is the spirit of the time. So it's this complex mixture of uh, what's happening in society, uh, the thought process people have at that time and uh, place, and aesthetic factors, what they find attractive or not attractive. So combine them all together and it's the zeitgeist of the time, so the, the spirit of the times. So you need to know that term. So what do we mean by dress? an assemblage of modifications of the body and or supplements to the body. This is important because what we mean by dress isn't just pieces of cloth put on top of the body. It also includes grooming, hair, makeup, what they're doing to the skin, accessories like shoes, pieces. So it includes not just clothing or pieces of cloth. Now the early types of clothing appeared Thousands of years ago, they did learn to use animal skins and hair. So they used things like plants, grasses, tree bark. They were able to get fibers from tree bark as well as animal hides and hair. Now, how do we know that? Cave drawings, tomb drawings, ancient sculptures. And as you see, a lot of the early stuff, it's going to be a lot of uh, sculptures and paintings, drawings, uh, not so much an actual uh, ancient piece until we start getting a little bit more modern. Now for early civilizations, people did eventually did learn to raise animals and grow crops. And they refined, they worked, they started and refined the art of spinning, weaving, and dyeing. So we've had this for a very long time. And they did cut fabric into garments. So ancient fashion contributions. So we're looking at Egypt, Minoan, Greece, Roman Empire, China, and Japan. In terms of the exact origin of dress, this we don't have exactly pinpointed because it's still being debated. We do see contrasting types of garments, so I can't tell you exactly it started at this point in time, but what I can tell you is that there were some variety of garments. It wasn't just one type of garment. Um, a lot of people think that there was a clear male versus female dress you know, like trousers for men and skirts for, for, for women, but that's not a true division. Uh, there's examples of Greek and Roman uh, that wore tunics and Near Eastern women that wore trousers. That's not really a true division for men and, and women in terms of early dress. So where you start seeing divisions and separation for the earliest types of dress, either by climate or either fitted versus draped, uh, one thing that we do notice is early dress tends to be looser, it tends to be draped. Modern clothing is definitely more fitted. We do see differences in geographic location, so tropical versus Arctic. Ancient civilizations actually started in tropical areas. So what we do have that isn't being debated is early Sumerian dress, and that's men and women wore these wrap skirts and kanunaki, which they held in place with wide belts. So they both used belts that held it in place and they both wore skirts. As you can see, this is a drawing and illustration and this is a sculpture. So this is early Sumerian. In terms of the motives for dress, either protection, modesty, display, and as you can see, this is ancient Babylonian clothing. That skirt you see in Sumeri Sumerian Babylonian times, you see that skirt again. You see the same type of skirt. You start seeing some differences on the top and for headpieces. Okay, so their motivation's a little bit different. 
but very similar in terms of the skirt. In terms of protection for the cold, very early evidence of using animal skin. Now, there were problems, however. It didn't drape well. It would get hard as it dried. Their first solution was, and we had, there is some proof that there was mastication. In other words, they would chew the hide in their mouth, and the chewing action and the saliva would, I know it sounds gross, but it would soften the hide, okay? And then they would wet the hide, and then they did that for a while, but obviously, come on, how much can you chew, right? And it still wouldn't stay that soft or pliable. So then they started wetting the hides and beating with a mallet, hammering it down. Then they added oil or blubber, and that's when they discovered tanning. The tanning, and what's interesting here is that in ancient times, this tanning process is what's used today. It's just, we use chemicals now, but this tanning process hasn't changed much since its inception. What they did was they discovered that certain trees, particular oak trees and willow trees, had tannic acid. Um, so they would soak the tree bark, and it would extract the acid and they would soak the animal skins in that water with that tannic acid. And what it did is it became pliable, soft, permanently, it wouldn't harden, and it was water, you know, waterproof, which was great. That's what we call the tanning. You need to know what that's and realize that it since they figured that out, it hasn't changed a whole lot. Also, we have evidence of the first needle that they were able to use um, to sew the hides. They would cut the hides, shape them a little bit, and then they invented the needle. The first examples are made out of ivory from mammoth, reindeer bones, and walrus tusks. So there's evidence there was a needle in the Paleolithic cave. They've had the needle for a long time, and again, allows to sew the pieces together. So this is an example of an early needle. In terms of regarding climate, climate wasn't too hot or too cold. They definitely used animal and vegetable fibers uh, for clothing. There was felting most likely used in Central Asia by Mongol uh, ancestors. It says most likely because there is still some debate over that, but the idea of agitating these uh, wool fibers until it matted together, but I'm not entirely certain. And what felting is, again, wool and hair combed out, wetted, placed in layers on a mat, then rolled up really tight and beating it, agitating it with a stick. And what it does is it interlocks the fibers together to create a cloth. So think like felt, like that cloth belt. So tree bark was stripped. They used the tannic acid, right, for the animal hides. What they also found out is that they would strip the tree bark, soak it in water. Layers are placed on rocks, on stones and they would crisscross, so at right angles, and they would beat it with a mallet until they kind of clunk together. So the idea is taking tree bark and almost doing like a felting process, and then they would oil or paint it. So it's kind of this cross between weaving and matting. So it's interesting. Fibers can be used in weaving, but not flax, hemp, cotton is better. In the New World, llama, alpaca, and vicuña were used. So depending on the geographic location, basically what you need to know is that they use what they had. What they had access to, obviously, right? And until trading started increasing, it basically whatever they had at their disposal around their environment, which makes sense. So the simplest method of early cloth is a small rectangle around the waist, like a sarong, and then they would add a square of cloth around the shoulders. And this method used a lot by Egyptians, Assyrians, Greeks, and Romans. It did require weaving because you have to weave the yarns to create that cloth. And there are a lot of statues that show like Sumerian statues that have these skirts, these rectangular pieces of cloth wrapped around their waist like a sarong. Evidence that Assyrians and Babylonians for both male and female, they gradually replaced for men with tunic. They had sleeves, so it's like a rectangular piece, but then you add sleeves to it. They do have Assyrian law stating around 1200, around 1200 BC, the married woman would wear a veil in public. And this is, you need to know this, the earliest record of a custom, so a uh, rule of dress. Um, so that's the earliest record we have. Married women had to wear a veil in public. Um, hair was worn long for the sexes, and they would, hair and beards would be curled with gold thread if to show status. For Persians, just so you know, they overran the Babylonian civilization in 6th century BC. Now they had cold, they lived in the mountains, so they had colder climate, so they had to wear warmer clothing. Eventually they did uh, start wearing fringe tunics. They did use wool from sheep and they did use linen and eventually when the caravan route started they did have access uh, not to a lot but to some silk from China. They kept closed, closed boots and had a characteristic headdress of a so made out of soft felt. Again, they they would felt the fabric and they called and they would wear these caps and they're called the Phrygian caps. Um, by the Greeks. And what's interesting is, two thousand no kidding, 2,000 years later, it was adopted by the French, the revolutionaries. 
the red cat a liver tea. So I'm sure, I don't think all of you have seen this picture, but some of you have. And that's the red cap of liberty. And this source of the inspiration for this hat actually started 2000, 2000 years prior to the French using this. So that's very interesting. And the most important innovation was the trouser, but still again being debated. But it did become a typical Persian garment, possibly worn for by women, but not entirely certain. Meads were the same race and similar garment, but looser and had more volume. They did wear a headdress with a round cap, round cap, and it did have a flat crown or sometimes a hood, but both sexes would wear it. So these kind of loose pants, see this shape? So those drawings show us that it was looser shape. And that is prior to ancient Egyptian times. So in part two, we will talk about ancient Egyptian and Crete. So thanks for listening.